Well, you know, uh, one of the things that this chart does show is gold has a lot of catching up to do. So there's there's a lot of performance in the future for uh, whatever things on this chart are lagging. They will eventually catch up to these other things. This is uh, also part of a very, very long term cycle. Uh, the commodities to equities cycle where, you know, equities outperform commodities for a certain period of time and then it reverses. And commodities have been in a bear market for a long, long time. They have bottomed and now they are going up and soaring. And economically, when you create a whole bunch of currency, energy gets stored. It doesn't all get released at once. Uh, the inflation is a combination of, uh, you know, in, in the short term, it's a combination of the quantity of currency, uh, the mood of the public, uh, and supply demand. When the demand goes up or if the supply shrinks, uh, that affects prices. Uh, so uh, a lot of this is all of the currency that uh, the world's central banks have created over, you know, since 2008, they've just gone totally insane. And for a long time, that was stored all in the stock markets. Well, I think we have now seen this reversal of the uh, commodities the, the equities to commodities cycle, and we're on the commodities side, and, and commodities should outperform equities for a long time. But what does that mean? That means big inflation. And then when you throw in the uh, war that is happening, Russia and the Ukraine, um, and the destabilization that that has, and so far, uh, Russia is still supplying Europe with uh, a lot of energy, but they have their uh, hands on the spigot. They, they can uh, limit the supply of energy. Uh, when you increase the cost of oil, that's basically the cost of your GDP because, you know, Chris Martinson did a, a video last week uh, that was brilliant on the direct correlation of uh, GD, global GDP and the amount of oil that we use. Uh, it, you know, it's the chicken and the egg thing. Does using more oil create more GDP or does having more GDP use up more oil? <laughs> it's, it's all one. So, uh, you know, there's another article on Zero Hedge here. Russian banks are switching to Chinese credit card systems. American Express uh, joined Visa and MasterCard in suspending Russian operations. Uh, you know, this is one of those nails in the coffin of the global dollar standard, even though this is happening to the ruble. This is part of people figuring out that this global financial system that is going on, that it, it, there's a lot of like hocus pocus here, uh, stuff just existing in the ether. What, what do you think of all of that? Yeah, I, I think this is just another one of those beliefs that's been shaken here, right? Where, um, uh, you know, first, I think, I, I don't know what was in Vladimir Putin's head or whatnot uh, before he decided to, to invade Ukraine. But, um, you know, currency flows are, are how commerce is conducted here, right? And so mm -hmm. where we're now basically shutting off Russia's ability to, to access the payment platforms that, you know, most commerce is done on, it's now having to find new new opportunities, right? And so, uh, China basically, or Russia, you know, pairing more tightly with China here, not a huge surprise, you know. But what this is doing is, it is challenging the belief in the dollar as the dominant reserve currency because we are providing tremendous incentive for those two players uh, to find a way to de-dollarize and to do transactions that are outside of the the. Uh, U.S. reserve currency system, but also tying it back to the, the freezing of the uh, the reserves that I talked about. There's a lot of other nations that are watching what's going on here and saying, you know what, I've got a lot of reserves stored with the U.S. or, or its allies. And yeah, I'm on their good list today. But what if we have a disagreement tomorrow? Well, I don't want to be as vulnerable as Russia is right now. And so I'm going to have to try to find ways to start to de-dollarize. So I, I'm, I'm just mentioning this, that the whole like game board, the whole geopolitical game board has just been shaken up here right now. And even if things resolve quickly in Ukraine, as we all hope they will, there's going to be really long lasting effects uh, trade-wise, geopolitical-wise, et cetera. But they, they're really going to impact people's attitudes about currency. Um, and, and, and really begin to wake up 
them to the difference that you just mentioned between currency and money. So I'm going to tie this back to our comment at the beginning about why what's going on right now is proving why now is the time to own gold. Because I think the developments that are happening right now are really underscoring the vulnerabilities of treating currency like money, right? That, that people are waking up to the fact that real money has advantages that just sitting uh, you know, in, in the current fiat currencies we've all been told are, are just fine. Uh, we're realizing that that's not the case. Yeah, you know, um, for years, I've been warning that uh, something like this would come one day. This is really shaking, uh, you know, to quote a friend and colleague of ours, Stephen Feldman, uh, the bedrock beliefs that formed the foundation of international economics have broken down and the consequences of this are very hard to predict. Well, you know, uh, more than half my net worth is in precious metals. And, you know, I, I still have a very uneasy feeling about everything that is happening. I am worried. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Uh, however, I feel that I've done a better job than 99.99% .99 of the population uh, to protect myself against this because, I mean, the, the idiocy of what, what has gone on with the world's central banks and the way they've been running the economy, uh, um, something like this can break everything. Uh, we've, we've gone on to this um, increasingly fragile system. It's more and more fragile every day, the global financial system. And, um, and uh, Russia being frozen out of half of the assets that it rightfully owns, it's going to cast doubt on currencies everywhere, including the, uh, the global dollar standard, which has been under attack for some time. And so uh, we're going to, to see some amazing stuff happen, happening over the next uh, few months. And hopefully it plays out over years instead of uh, uh, suddenly coming to an end. I'm sorry, I'm laughing about it. I shouldn't be. But, you know, Russia put their nuclear forces on high alert. This is a really dangerous situation. If we ever make it to World War III, it starts with World War E. I'm praying that we never get to uh, World War III. Now, the worst thing that could happen in World War E is the whole internet just coming down. Uh, however, all of these hackers, these people live in the internet. This is a major portion of their life, and it would be like them committing suicide uh, to try to bring down uh, the whole internet system even when it's for, uh, if it was just in, in an area, like if they were going to try and bring down the internet in the US, uh, uh, that would be them sort of committing suicide because they aren't able to operate in something that doesn't exist. And, and the internet is their world. Uh, so uh, this is another reason that everybody needs to have some protection and diversity uh, if you've, you know, it's, it's good to have some cryptocurrencies, but if you're only cryptocurrencies, it's good to have gold and silver. I see precious metals and cryptocurrencies as allies in individual liberty, individual freedom, and uh, two different modes of protection against all of this. You know, um, in a company meeting that we had a little while ago, uh, I was saying that under these circumstances, 2000, $5,000, even $10,000 an ounce for gold. If you look at how many ounces exist and how many people there are out there with a lot of capital that want to seek some sort of protection. Uh, when you take a look at that, two, five, even $10,000 an ounce gold is a stupid, idiotic low price, especially $2,000. This is like uh, crazy. I'm, I am really surprised that it's only at $2,000 right now. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> um, my former business partner, uh, you know, I used to get asked back when, when uh, gold was $600 an ounce, uh, people would say, uh, I, I'd give them a whole bunch of information, try to educate them on what's going on in the world. And they'd say, okay, well, just tell me when I should buy. 
And then I would uh, tell them why I, I never make recommendations. I tell people what I'm doing. I, uh, when, when gold was a thousand bucks an ounce, I'd give everybody all of this information. Okay, well, just tell me when I should buy. <laughs> I'd say, well, I'm buying right now. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want. Uh, and when it was $1,500 an ounce, and then my business partner said, you know what they're really saying? They're saying they don't want to buy gold right now. They want to be in stocks. But you know, when something bad happens, when it's going to explode, then let them know. Well, the, the, the whole point is you can't trade Armageddon. You can't trade Armageddon. Gold is just an asset that everybody should have, uh, in my opinion. I'm not telling them to buy it. I don't give financial advice, but it's, you know, precious metals. I, ha I have a tough time justifying purchasing gold when the gold silver ratio is at these extremes. I still purchase mostly silver, but I find that uh, I am probably less worried about the financial situation going on than 99.999% of the population. So uh, I, I've done what I could over the past couple of decades almost uh, to try and get ready for what is happening right now. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.